A thrilling narrative unfolds beneath the ocean's surface as humans encounter majestic sharks. This journey, ripe with mystery and mutual respect, challenges our fears and unveils the sea's secrets. Join us to explore these profound meetings where the lines between fear and fascination blur. In the early years of the 1900s near the Great Barrier Reef in Queensland, Australia, there lived a seasoned fisherman named John Andrews. John had spent many years at sea, his skin tanned by the sun and his hands rough from the ropes. He knew the waters like the back of his hand, navigating his small wooden canoe efficiently and skillfully. This part of the ocean was his home, where he felt at peace amidst the waves and the salt air. One day John set out into the open sea, just as he had done countless times before. The sky was clear and the water was calm, making for a perfect day of fishing. As he paddled further from the shore, John couldn't shake off the stories he had heard from the other fishermen in town. They spoke of a legendary great white shark, known by the locals as the Phantom of the Deep. This shark was unlike any other. It was considered unusually large and aggressive, with a history of attacking boats that ventured too far into its territory. Despite the warnings, John was not afraid. He had faced many challenges at sea and believed his experience and resourcefulness would keep him safe. He cast his net into the water as he reached his favorite fishing spot, hoping for a good catch. Hours passed, and John enjoyed the solitude and the rhythmic motion of the sea. However, his peace was shattered when he felt a sudden powerful tug on his canoe. Startled, he saw a dark shadow moving swiftly beneath the water. It was the Phantom of the Deep, the legendary shark, coming straight for his canoe. John's heart raced as the shark circled closer its massive form visible below the surface. He knew he had to act quickly. Grabbing his oar, he tried to paddle away, but the shark was too fast. It rammed into the canoe with a mighty thud, nearly tipping John into the water. The struggle for survival had begun. John fought to keep his balance, knowing that falling into the water would mean certain death. The shark circled back, its eyes fixed on John and his canoe. With each pass, it seemed to grow more aggressive, determined to overturn the small boat. John remembered the tales of the shark's attacks on other boats. It was said that the Phantom of the Deep had never been defeated, its strength and ferocity unmatched by any creature in the sea. But John refused to give up. He used his knowledge of the sea to his advantage, maneuvering the canoe in ways that made it difficult for the shark to predict his next move. The battle between man and beast continued as the sun began to set. John's arms ached from the effort, but he did not relent. He knew his only hope was to outlast the shark and wear it down until it lost interest. The sky turned orange and then pink, the beauty of the sunset lost on John as he fought for his life. The shark, relentless in its pursuit, seemed to sense John's determination. It was a test of wills, a battle of endurance between the seasoned fisherman and the legendary Phantom of the Deep. As the first stars appeared in the sky, the shark made one final desperate charge at the canoe. John braced himself, ready for the impact. But at the last moment, the shark veered off, disappearing into the ocean's depths. John was left alone on the open sea, his canoe intact but his body and spirit exhausted. He had survived the encounter with the Phantom of the Deep, but he knew the night was not over. He had to make it back to shore, back to safety. The journey home would be long and treacherous, but John was determined to see it through. As he paddled towards the distant lights of the coast, John couldn't help but wonder about the shark. Had it indeed given up, or was it waiting for another opportunity to strike? The encounter would become a tale passed down through generations, a testament to the fisherman's courage and the legend of the Phantom of the Deep. The night was silent as John Andrews continued his journey back to the coast of Queensland, Australia. With each stroke of his paddle, he moved further away from the open sea and closer to safety. The encounter with the Phantom of the Deep had taken its toll on John. His muscles ached and his mind was weary, but the thought of reaching home strengthened him. As the moon rose high in the sky, casting a silver glow over the water, John reflected on the day's events. He had faced the legendary shark and lived to tell the tale. It was a story that would indeed be passed down through generations, a testament to his bravery and the mysterious creature that lurked in the depths of the Great Barrier Reef. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, John saw the familiar outline of the shore. Relief washed over him as he realized he was almost home. 
As he approached the beach, the lights of the small fishing village came into view, welcoming him back from his harrowing adventure. John dragged his canoe onto the sand, his legs shaky from exhaustion. He looked out at the sea one last time, half expecting to see the dark shadow of the shark. But the water was calm and the shark was nowhere to be seen. However, John knew that the Phantom of the Deep was still out there, a reminder of nature's untamed wildness. Word of John's encounter with the legendary shark spread quickly through the village. People gathered around him eager to hear his story. John recounted his tale, describing the shark's massive size and strength, and how he had used his wits and experience to survive. Fishermen spoke of the encounter in hushed tones, a reminder of the dangers that lurked beneath the waves. But for John, the experience was more than just a tale of survival. It reminded him of his connection to the sea, a beautiful and terrifying force. As the years passed, John continued to fish the waters of the Great Barrier Reef. He never again encountered the great white shark, but he always kept a watchful eye on the horizon. The sea was his home, a place of endless mystery and adventure. John's story was a cautionary tale for those who ventured into the deep waters. It reminded them to respect the ocean and its inhabitants, to understand that humans were just visitors in a world that belonged to creatures like the Phantom of the Deep. The legend of the great white shark lived on symbolizing the untamed beauty of the Great Barrier Reef. And John Andrews, the seasoned fisherman who had faced the beast and lived, became a part of the sea lore, his name forever linked with the legendary Phantom of the Deep. In the end, John's encounter with the shark did not deter him from the sea but deepened his respect for it. He knew that the ocean was full of wonders and dangers, a place where stories of bravery and survival were written in the waves. John Andrews had become a part of that story, a reminder of the indomitable spirit of those who call the sea their home. In the warm, inviting waters of the Belize Barrier Reef, Nicole White, a marine ecologist, embarked on a purposeful mission. Alongside her team, she aimed to revive the coral reefs, these underwater rainforests teeming with life. Their work in the Caribbean, planting corals and finding ways to prevent further damage, had spanned several months. As dawn broke, splashing the sky with vibrant oranges and pinks, Nicole's team set sail, buzzing with anticipation for the day's efforts. The Belize Barrier Reef, with its transparent waters and rich marine life, was a sight to behold. Nicole, deeply connected to the ocean, was committed to safeguarding its splendor. Arriving at their designated site, the team got down to business, planting corals and monitoring the ecosystem's health under Nicole's guidance. Their task required precision and a soft touch. United by a passion for conservation, they tackled their mission with determination. However, an unforeseen challenge emerged. A reef shark, drawn by curiosity and a sense of guardianship over its home, started circling the area. While shark sightings were common in these parts, this particular shark seemed unusually focused on the humans disrupting its territory. Nicole's initial reaction was fear. Sharks, after all, are powerful beings, but she also respected their role in the ecosystem. Choosing observation over panic, Nicole sought to understand the shark's actions. The situation escalated when the shark, perhaps viewing their work as an intrusion, approached aggressively. Its powerful form cut through the water, coming dangerously close. Nicole, maintaining her composure, instructed her team to stay calm and avoid sudden movements so as not to provoke the shark further. But despite their caution, the shark's behavior turned confrontational. It darted towards one of the divers, brushing against him and leaving a shallow cut on his arm. The team was in shock. Nicole knew they had to act swiftly to prevent further incidents. Utilizing her knowledge and experience, Nicole directed her team to form a tight group and slowly retreat to the boat. She grabbed a nearby piece of coral debris and tossed it away from them, diverting the shark's attention. The shark, momentarily distracted by the debris, allowed them a moment to escape. This harrowing encounter was a wake-up call. Nicole realized the delicate balance they were disturbing and saw firsthand the consequences of their intrusion. The team's safety was her top priority, and she knew adjustments were needed to continue their work without endangering both the marine life and themselves. Back on the boat with the injured team member receiving first aid, Nicole reflected on the incident. It was a stark reminder of the unpredictable nature of working in such a wild environment. The team's efforts to restore the reef had inadvertently put them in harm's way. 
highlighting the need for more cautious, non-invasive methods. The shark attack shifted Nicole's perspective. She understood that their presence in the reef was not merely about restoration, but about coexisting with the marine inhabitants. The balance of the ecosystem was fragile and their actions had consequences. That evening, as Nicole pondered their next steps, she felt a mix of emotions. The day's events had tested their resolve, but also reinforced their commitment to the reef's preservation. Nicole knew they had to find a way to work in harmony with the ocean's creatures, respecting the home they were striving to protect. This incident spurred Nicole to research and implement non-invasive conservation techniques. She became an advocate for approaches that minimized human impact on marine ecosystems, ensuring that future restoration efforts would be safer for both her team and the reef's inhabitants. As Nicole looked out over the reef, the stars twinkling above, she realized the journey ahead was filled with challenges. Yet she was more determined than ever to make a difference, armed with a deeper respect for the ocean and its complex web of life. After the shark incident, Nicole's perspective on coral restoration underwent a profound transformation. The encounter served not just as a reminder of the ocean's unpredictability, but also as a crucial lesson in humility and coexistence. Determined to ensure the safety of her team while minimizing their impact on the marine ecosystem, Nicole initiated a series of changes to their restoration practices. First, she organized workshops on safety and emergency response for her team, focusing on how to act during encounters with marine wildlife. She emphasized the importance of understanding shark behavior, reducing panic, and using non-threatening maneuvers to retreat safely. Nicole also invested in safer, less invasive equipment that would not disturb marine life as much, ensuring their work was quieter and less disruptive. To further minimize their impact, Nicole introduced a system of rotating work zones, allowing parts of the reef to rest and recover while they focused on other areas. This approach not only reduced stress on the ecosystem, but also allowed the team to monitor the progress and health of the coral more effectively. Nicole's commitment to non-invasive conservation techniques caught the attention of the broader conservation community. She shared her experiences and insights at conferences, advocating for approaches that respected marine life's intricacies. Her story of the encounter with the shark and how it reshaped their mission inspired others to reconsider their methods, sparking a shift towards more mindful and respectful conservation practices. Meanwhile, back at the reef, the changes were bearing fruit. The areas where Nicole's team worked showed signs of recovery with new coral growth and an increase in fish populations. The shark, once a symbol of the challenges they faced, now seemed to keep a respectful distance, its behavior a reminder of the delicate balance they were working to preserve. Nicole's team, now more experienced and mindful of their impact, continued their work with renewed vigor and respect for the marine environment. Their efforts were a testament to the idea that humans could indeed contribute positively to the ocean's health without causing harm. Years later, the Belize Barrier Reef showed remarkable signs of recovery. The coral was thriving, fish populations were up, and the ecosystem was more resilient. Nicole's encounter with the shark had become a pivotal moment in her career, a story she often shared to highlight the importance of respecting and understanding the ocean's inhabitants. As she stood on the deck of their boat watching the sun dip below the horizon, Nicole felt a profound connection to the ocean and its myriad forms of life. The journey had been full of challenges, but it was also immensely rewarding. She had learned that proper conservation was about more than just restoration. It was about harmony and respect. Nicole's work on the Belize Barrier Reef was a reminder to all that conservation efforts must be thoughtful respecting the delicate balance of ecosystems. The story of her and her team's evolution, spurred by a single encounter with a reef shark, echoed a powerful message. Coexistence is possible and the key to successful conservation. The legacy of Nicole's work, marked by a dedication to non-invasive techniques and safety, continued to inspire future generations of marine ecologists. The vibrant and full-of-life reef stood as a testament to what can be achieved when humans work in harmony with nature, respecting its guardians and learning from its lessons. In the far reaches of the Arctic, near the icy lands of Svalbard, Norway, Kevin Gilbert, a brave documentary filmmaker, embarked on a thrilling adventure. His mission was simple yet daring, 
to capture the rarely seen Greenland shark in its natural icy habitat. Kevin had always been fascinated by the mysteries of the deep, and his latest quest was this elusive giant of the Arctic waters. The Greenland shark, a creature of legend and mystery, thrives in the cold, dark depths of the Arctic Ocean. Its ability to survive in such extreme conditions has intrigued scientists and adventurers alike. With his camera and insatiable curiosity, Kevin hoped to shed light on this mysterious creature, bringing its story to the world. As Kevin arrived in Svalbard, he was greeted by the stark beauty of the Arctic. The landscape was a vast expanse of white, with towering glaciers and frozen seas stretching as far as the eye could see. The air was crisp and cold, biting his skin, but Kevin felt excited. This was the kind of challenge he lived for, an opportunity to explore the unknown and share its wonders with the world. Preparing for the expedition was no small feat. Kevin and his team gathered their equipment, checking and double-checking everything they would need for the ice diving expedition. Special suits to withstand the freezing temperatures, cameras capable of capturing images in the low light of the Arctic waters, and safety gear for the dangerous conditions under the ice were all essential. Every detail had to be perfect. There was no room for error in such a harsh environment. Finally, the day of the dive arrived. Kevin's heart raced with anticipation as he donned his diving suit, feeling the moment's weight. This was his chance to meet the Greenland shark, a creature few had ever encountered in its natural setting. The dive team reached the designated spot, where the ice was thick enough to support their equipment but allowed access to the water below. They cut a hole in the ice, revealing the dark, freezing waters of the Arctic Ocean. Kevin took a deep breath, steadying his nerves, and then, with a nod to his team, he descended into the icy depths. Kevin was enveloped in a world of cold silence as he sank beneath the surface. The light from above faded, and he switched on his underwater camera, its beam cutting through the darkness. The water was so cold it seemed to press against him, but his suit protected him from the worst. He swam slowly and conservatively, aware that every movement used precious energy and oxygen. The underwater landscape was otherworldly, with towering ice formations and a dim, eerie light that filtered through the ice above. It was a beautiful but foreboding place, reminding Kevin of the dangers that lurked in these waters. As he ventured further, Kevin kept his eyes peeled for any sign of the Greenland shark. These creatures were known to be slow-moving and elusive, often blending into the dark waters, making them difficult to spot. Kevin moved cautiously, his camera ready to capture the moment he had been waiting. Then, out of the shadows, a shape began to emerge. At first, it was just a darker patch in the gloom, but as Kevin approached, the outline of the Greenland shark became clear. It was an awe-inspiring sight, the massive shark moving slowly through the water, its eyes a ghostly pale. Kevin's heart pounded with excitement and fear as he realized he was witnessing one of the Arctic's most mysterious creatures in its natural environment. He raised his camera, capturing when the Greenland shark swam past him. Being so close to such a powerful creature under the ice was a tense and dangerous situation. Kevin knew he had to keep his wits about him, maintaining a safe distance while still trying to get the needed footage. The encounter was brief but unforgettable. As the shark disappeared into the darkness, Kevin was left with a profound sense of awe and respect for this giant of the Arctic. He had come in search of discovery and adventure and found it in the icy waters of Svalbard, face to face with the elusive Greenland shark. As Kevin Gilbert ascended from the icy depths back to the surface, his mind raced with the images he had just captured. The encounter with the Greenland shark, an elusive and mysterious creature, was more than he had dared hope for. As he emerged from the water and was helped back onto the ice by his team, the cold air hit him, but the thrill of the dive insulated him against the chill. He had achieved what he had come to the Arctic for, but his adventure was far from over. Kevin and his team gathered at their base camp to review the footage. The images of the Greenland shark were mesmerizing, a ghostly presence in the dark waters beneath the ice. The team was ecstatic. They knew they had something special. Footage that would captivate and educate the world about one of the Arctic's most secretive inhabitants. However, the encounter under the ice also left Kevin with a deep sense of humility and respect for the extreme conditions of the Arctic and the creatures that call it home. With its slow, deliberate movements and ancient eyes, the Greenland shark seemed like a guardian of the deep, 
a living link to a world still largely unexplored and unknown. Kevin's thoughts turned to the challenges facing the Arctic and its inhabitants. Climate change, melting ice caps, and human activity all impacted this fragile ecosystem. He realized that his documentary had the potential to do more than just showcase the beauty and mystery of the Greenland shark. It could also highlight the importance of preserving this unique environment for future generations. With a renewed sense of purpose, Kevin and his team set out to capture more than just footage of the shark. They documented the stunning landscapes of the Arctic, the icebergs, and the wildlife, weaving a narrative that connected the Greenland shark to the broader story of the Arctic's delicate balance. They interviewed scientists and conservationists, adding their voices to the documentary to provide context and depth to the story they were telling. Kevin felt mixed emotions as the days passed and their time in Svalbard ended. He was proud of their work, but also acutely aware of the responsibility that came with it. The Arctic had shown him wonders and dangers, beauty and fragility, and he was determined to share these with the world in a way that would inspire action and care for the planet. The journey back home was a time for reflection. Kevin thought about the Greenland shark, a creature that had survived in the Arctic for centuries, perhaps even millennia. It had adapted to its environment, thriving in conditions that would be hostile to most other life forms. There was a lesson there, Kevin thought, about resilience, adaptation, and the need for humans to respect and protect the natural world. When the documentary was finally released, it was met with acclaim. Viewers were captivated by the footage of the Greenland shark and moved by the story of the Arctic's beauty and vulnerability. Kevin's encounter under the ice had become a powerful message about discovery, adventure, and the importance of conservation. For Kevin, the experience had been life-changing. He had set out in search of adventure and discovery. He had found it in the eyes of the Greenland shark, the vast icy Arctic landscapes, and the stories of those working to protect it. The documentary was more than just a film. It was a call to action, a reminder of the wonders that existed in the world and the responsibility to preserve them for future generations. As he looked forward to his next adventure, Kevin knew that the Arctic, with its harsh beauty and mysterious inhabitants, would always hold a special place in his heart. The Greenland shark, the ghost of the deep, had left an indelible mark on his soul, a reminder of the wild, unexplored corners of the planet that still held secrets waiting to be discovered. In the heart of the Pacific, surrounded by the vast blue ocean, lies the Solomon Islands, a paradise for adventurers and nature lovers alike. Among these adventurers was Emily Carter, a daring night diver who sought the thrill of exploring the underwater world after dark. Emily was fascinated by the ocean's mysteries, especially the bioluminescent creatures that lit up the waters with their magical glow. One calm evening as the sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky in shades of pink and purple, Emily prepared for a dive unlike any other. She had heard tales of a place off the coast where the water came alive at night, sparkling with the light of countless bioluminescent organisms. With her dive gear and a powerful underwater light, she set out to experience this natural wonder. Emily slipped into the water, her heart beating with excitement. As she descended into the depths, the world around her transformed. The ocean's darkness was pierced by her dive light, revealing a hidden realm where tiny creatures shimmered like stars in the night sky. It was a breathtaking sight and Emily was mesmerized by the beauty of the bioluminescent display. As she swam farther, Emily's light danced across the water, attracting the attention of the ocean's nocturnal inhabitants. Fish darted in and out of the beam, their scales reflecting the light in flashes of silver. Emily felt a deep connection to this mysterious world, a place of beauty and danger intertwined. However, unbeknownst to Emily, her dive light was also attracting the attention of more formidable creatures. The area was a hunting ground for a pack of nocturnal sharks, predators that roamed the waters for their next meal. As Emily marveled at the bioluminescent spectacle, the sharks began to close in, drawn by the light that pierced the darkness. The peacefulness of the dive was soon shattered by the realization that she was not alone. Emily's heart raced as she detected movement in the periphery of her light. At first, she thought it was just another curious fish, but the size and shape of the shadows hinted at something far more dangerous. Emily knew she was in a precarious situation, 
The beauty of the bioluminescent creatures had led her into the hunting ground of nocturnal sharks, turning her dive into a battle of wits and survival skills. She had to rely on her knowledge of the ocean and its predators to navigate the pitch-black waters safely. As she cautiously moved, trying to avoid attracting more attention, Emily couldn't help but admire the efficiency and grace of the sharks as they moved through the water. She understood that she was an intruder in their domain, a guest in the vast and mysterious underwater world that came alive in the darkness of the night. The encounter was a stark reminder of the ocean's dual nature, a place of unparalleled beauty and inherent danger. Emily's respect for the predators of the deep grew as she realized the delicate balance in the ocean's nocturnal ecosystem. Her adventure had taken an unexpected turn, but it was a vivid lesson in respecting the sea and its inhabitants, no matter how mesmerizing or thrilling the dive might be. In the shadowy waters of the Solomon Islands, Emily Carter found herself in a delicate dance of light and shadow, surrounded by the silent forms of nocturnal sharks. Her heart pounded not just with fear, but also with respect for these majestic creatures of the deep. The beauty of the bioluminescent world she had sought to explore was now intertwined with the thrill of survival. Aware that her dive light was both a beacon and a danger, Emily gradually dimmed it, hoping to become less visible to the circling predators. As the light faded, the glowing life around her became even more pronounced, painting a surreal scene in the underwater night. Emily moved slowly, minimizing her movements to avoid attracting further attention from the sharks. The darkness was now almost complete, save for the natural glow of the bioluminescent organisms. Emily's eyes adjusted and she began appreciating the subtle interplay of light and life in this unique ecosystem. The curious yet cautious sharks seemed to accept her presence, allowing her to observe them from a safe distance. It was a moment of profound connection, a reminder that humans were not rulers of the natural world but participants in its intricate dance. Realizing the importance of coexistence and respect, Emily reflected on the lessons this dive had taught her. The ocean was a place of endless wonders, but it demanded respect. The thrill of adventure could not come at the expense of the safety of its creatures or the balance of their habitats. As Emily slowly ascended to the surface, she felt deeply grateful for the experience. The encounter with the sharks in the bioluminescent waters had been a powerful reminder of the beauty and danger that coexisted in the ocean. It also reinforced her commitment to responsible diving practices that honored the sanctity of marine life. Back on the boat, Emily shared her experience with her fellow divers, emphasizing the importance of respecting the ocean's predators and the delicate ecosystems they inhabited. Her story was a testament to the transformative power of nature and the need for humanity to approach it with humility and care. The night dive among the bioluminescent creatures and nocturnal sharks would remain with Emily as a vivid reminder of the ocean's mysteries. It was an adventure that had brought her face to face with the raw beauty and inherent dangers of the underwater world, deepening her respect for the ocean and its inhabitants. Looking back at the dark waters now calm and serene in the moonlight, Emily knew that this experience would shape her future interactions with the marine world, always with awe, respect, and a profound sense of responsibility. Alex Johnson embarked on a journey of recovery and solidarity in the serene yet wild waters off the coast of Gansbai, South Africa, known for its dense population of sharks. Having survived a harrowing shark attack himself, Alex knew the depth of fear and trauma such an experience could engrave in one's heart. Determined to transform his ordeal into a beacon of hope, he founded a support group for individuals who had faced similar encounters. This group became a sanctuary for survivors, where their stories and fears could be shared without judgment, and understanding and empathy flourished. Alex proposed a daring and therapeutic idea, a group sea voyage into the waters that had once been a source of their nightmares. He intended to help the group confront their fears, look them in the eye, and find peace. The idea was met with mixed emotions, a blend of apprehension and a quiet, emerging courage. After months of preparation, which included safety protocols and learning about shark behavior, the group was ready to set sail. The day of the voyage dawned clear and bright with the sun casting a golden glow over the waters of Gansby. As the boat left the harbor, there was palpable tension among the group. Each member was lost in their thoughts and memories. 
Alex stood among them offering encouragement, reminding them of the strength they had shown by simply being there. As they ventured farther into the sea, the group's focus shifted to the world beneath the waves, guided by marine biologists who explained the importance of sharks in the ocean's ecosystem. This educational aspect was crucial to Alex's plan. Understanding was the first step toward overcoming fear. The moment of truth arrived when the boat slowed, hovering over a known shark hotspot. The water around them teemed with life and then, gracefully and silently, a school of sharks appeared, gliding through the blue depths. The sight was both terrifying and mesmerizing. The group members, once victims of their trauma, now watched in awe, their fears mingling with a newfound respect for these misunderstood creatures. In this shared moment of vulnerability and wonder, the survivors found themselves on the cusp of something profound. The sea, once a source of their deepest fears, was now a stage for healing and understanding. As they observed the sharks not as monsters but as an essential part of the natural world, the seeds of transformation were sown. The journey was about facing their fears and understanding and respecting the force that had changed their lives. This voyage was the first step in a healing journey, guided by the power of community and the therapeutic nature of facing one's fears head-on. Something remarkable happened as the group watched the sharks move elegantly. The sea of fear that had once engulfed them began to recede, replaced by a sense of awe and a deeper understanding. Observing the change in his companions' expressions, Alex knew that this moment culminated their journey together. The sharks, once symbols of terror, now represented a bridge to recovery and acceptance. The marine biologists on board shared insights into the sharks' behavior emphasizing their role in the marine ecosystem. This knowledge helped the group see the creatures in a new light, not as villains of the sea but as vital participants in the ocean's delicate balance. The realization that their fear had been rooted in misunderstanding helped dissolve the barriers that had held them back from healing. The atmosphere was markedly different as the boat began its journey back to shore. There was laughter, shared stories, and reflections on the experience. The encounter had sparked a shift, allowing the group to reclaim power over their trauma. Alex watched his companions proud of their courage and the strides they had made. Back on land, the group gathered one last time to discuss the day's events. They spoke of their fears, initial reluctance, and how the experience transformed their perceptions. The support group, which had started as a collective of individuals bound by their traumatic encounters, had evolved into a community of empowered survivors united in their journey toward healing. The sea voyage off the coast of Gansby brought them face to face with their fears and showed them the beauty and complexity of the natural world. By confronting their past, they had opened the door to a future where fear no longer held dominion over their lives. This experience, rooted in understanding and respect, highlighted the transformative power of facing one's fears, supported by the strength of community. In the vast open waters of False Bay, South Africa, Known as the gateway to the infamous Shark Alley, a competitive freediver named Mia Thompson prepared to test the limits of her abilities. Mia, known for her daring and skill, had set her sights on a new challenge, to break the record for the deepest freedive in these shark-inhabited waters. The ocean here was beautiful but notorious for its population of great white sharks, the sea's apex predators. Mia was not only drawn by the thrill of the challenge, but also by a deep respect for the ocean and its inhabitants. The morning of the attempt dawned clear and bright, with the sun casting a shimmering path across the calm sea. Mia stood on the boat's edge, taking deep, focused breaths, readying her body and mind for the dive. Her team, including safety divers and marine biologists, watched with admiration and concern. They understood the risks involved, but also trusted Mia's skill and preparation. Mia slipped into the water with a final deep breath, her body cutting through the surface with barely a splash. She descended swiftly, propelled by her powerful kicks, her eyes focused on the depths below. The water around her grew darker as she went more profound, the sounds of the surface world fading away until all that remained was the beating of her heart and the slow rhythm of her breath. As Mia approached the target depth, she felt a surge of adrenaline. The ocean floor loomed below her, a vast expanse of shadow and light. It was in this moment of solitude and focus that Mia sensed she was not alone. 
Out of the corner of her eye, she caught a glimpse of a massive shape moving in the water. A great white shark, drawn by the disturbance in its territory, was approaching her, its movements deliberate and curious. Mia's heart raced, but she remained calm. She knew that panic would only attract the shark further. Drawing on her understanding of shark behavior and extensive training, she maintained her composure using slow, controlled movements to signal that she was not a threat. As the shark circled closer, Mia prepared to use her free diving skills to make a controlled ascent, hoping to surface safely without provoking an attack. The encounter with the great white shark was the ultimate test of Mia's bravery and respect for the ocean's apex predators. It was a moment that balanced the thin line between courage and recklessness, a test of her ability to face the ocean's most significant challenge with grace and respect. As Mia began her ascent, her every move was calculated, designed to minimize any perceived threat to the great white shark now escorting her through the depths. The shark, a formidable silhouette against the dim light from above, continued to circle, its curiosity peaked but not aggressive. Mia focused on her training, using gentle movements to rise towards the surface, her eyes never leaving the massive predator. The distance between them slowly increased as Mia neared the surface, her lungs aching for air but her mind remarkably clear. She broke through the water's surface, gasping for breath, the sunlight warming her face. The safety team rushed to her side, relief evident in their eyes. Mia looked back at the water, half expecting the shark to follow, but it remained deep, a shadow fading into the blue. Mia reflected on the encounter on the boat, wrapped in a blanket. She had achieved her goal, not just in terms of depth, but also in facing the ultimate challenge of the ocean. The experience was a profound reminder of the respect owed to these majestic creatures and the fine line between pursuing one's passions and respecting nature's boundaries. Mia's story spread, inspiring both awe and debate. It underscored the importance of understanding and respecting the ocean's apex predators. It highlighted the personal growth that comes from confronting fears head-on. For Mia, the dive was more than a record. It was a life-changing encounter that deepened her connection to the sea and its most formidable inhabitants.